Feeling blue? You're not alone. Today is what is known as Blue Monday for being the most depressing day of the year. So what can we do about it? Joining me now is registered psychotherapist Colleen Blake Miller. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Colleen. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for having me. Well, Colleen, Blue Monday, I mean, many of us have heard of it. It's mm -hmm. in the media. Where did this idea start? What are, what are we referring to when we talk about Blue Monday? So the science around um, Blue Monday is a little bit mixed in terms of whether it was for marketing or if it's really the most depressing day of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of, of, of those facts, January in this time of year is often reported to be a time when people are feeling more low. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, um, the, the post-holiday blues, you know, all the bills from yeah. all the exciting things you were doing yeah. uh, for Christmas are coming in, the reality of, um, resolutions but now you're actually back to the way you were <laughs> behaving and the practices as you were before January is kicking in and people are you know feeling low that the, the it's colder the, there's less yeah. sunlight um, all of those factors I think play into why people sometimes feel a little bit low around this time of year well, it's interesting, yeah. like less sunlight this time of year, it's when seasonal affective disorder could mm -hmm. kick in for people. And that's, that's right. where they have less vitamin D and they that's start right. to feel down. That's right. Well, that's interesting, Colleen, and it's so important as followers of Jesus that we unpack the mm -hmm. stigma around mental health, but also as the regular Canadian public, we need to stop stigma. That's Why right. is it so important to stop the stigma around mental health issues? Well, I mean, we all have mental health, like we all have physical health. Uh, and I think we want optimal mental health. That's what I would challenge anyone to pursue. And it doesn't just happen organically. We have to do things intentionally to ensure that we have optimal mental health. And so that's why we need not be afraid to talk about the issues that we all face, um, some more than others, but we need to normalize it within our Christian spaces. Yeah. Well, that's right. And you know, you've got six tips to optimal mental health, and we want to go through them right now with our viewers to encourage them this time of year, because there are things we can do to promote good Absolutely. mental health. Yeah. And so one of those tips yeah. is, you've just mentioned it, it's acknowledging our feelings. That's right. Um, you know, you can't change something that you're not aware of, or you're not willing to acknowledge. So it's this idea of um, paying attention and noticing what's happening with you yeah. emotionally, mentally, spiritually, um, just kind of cluing in and noticing when things get a little bit low and then you can do something about that. And yeah. so I love that. And, you know, that's the awareness. That's the awareness about mental health challenges mm -hmm. that we're all on that spectrum of mental health. Yeah. Now, there's something else that you've listed, and that is to manage anxiety-provoking thoughts. Yes. That's interesting. I'm yeah. I know some of us are quite anxious, and we're like, I don't even know why I'm anxious. Yes. <laughs> you know, I have friends like that. Yeah. So what are those anxiety-provoking thoughts? What would they look mm -hmm. like, and how do we manage them? I mean, we have the anxiety-provoking thoughts because there's a lot of things um, messaging coming to us that provoke anxiety, you know, thoughts about what's happening in our world, what is my future going to look like, um, worrying about your health, worrying about your loved ones, like there really is a lot of heaviness in the world that we are facing. But the thing about managing our thoughts is that we have uh, the responsibility to take charge of what stays in our mind. Instead of just allowing thoughts to um, kind of be in the driver's seat, as it were, of your life, you have the ability, and the Bible speaks about renewing your mind. The Bible is clear, Paul talks about in Philippians, about um, instead of being anxious, bring your anxieties to God. And instead of worrying and being anxious, doing these things instead, thinking intentionally, what is good? What is lovely? Mm -hmm. What is praiseworthy? What is true? Focusing your mind on those things instead, in in conjunction with being thankful and trusting God, um, it's it's work, but it can be done, and we need to do it. We yeah. we need to do it. Yeah, it's good, and you know, it can feel a little bit like it's heavy lifting, but the reality, yeah. it's not, because God's spirit is with you, mm -hmm. and as you obey, you know, those scriptural commands, yeah. it does work. That's right. To think on these things that are beautiful, worthy of praise, all those layers. Yeah. Um, I love that so much. Now, another tip you have is to limit your media consumption, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I love that. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. I'm a believer in you know reading the newspaper if you need to online instead of watching videos. Mm. All different ways we can manage our media consumption. So. Yeah. 
we don't just see negative news. But yeah. tell me a little bit more about limiting media consumption. Well, well, think about it, right? A lot of the media outlets, they're, they're in business. So they want to keep you watching. How are they going to keep you watching? Um, you know, making you think you've got to stay on, you know, top of whatever the news might be. Uh, but the, the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of heaviness. There's a lot of, you know, we still are, you know, kind of dealing with post-pandemic um, fright and, and worry and those kinds of things. Um, you want to control what you're exposing yourself to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, watch the news, mm -hmm. but watch maybe the six o'clock news. Yeah. Uh, check in online, but put a timer on so you don't get lost in that. You know that um, like yeah. you're in a coma and you're just like swiping yeah. up and up and up. You know, you want to, you know, kind of yeah. engage and, and, and take action so you are, again, in the driver's seat. Well, just like taking control of your thoughts, taking control of your media consumption. That's right. That's so good. Oh, Colleen, I love these tips. I've got to use them more. And more. <laughs> we do. We all do. Well, and here's a tip you also yeah. share to get moving. Mm. Now, that's hard this time of year when it it's dark is. and cold. So what do we do? It and why is. is getting our body moving so important? Well, all the feel-good hormones, right? That's how we get them going. And um, I know it, it, it's like the thing that's going to help us feel better is the thing sometimes we don't feel motivated to do. Yeah. So that's why rhythms and, um, you know, kind of disciplines and practices are really important to try to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, also trying to do it in community. Instead of saying, I am going to go for a walk three times a week, call a friend, you know, you know, grab your spouse, grab your kids. That's what I do often. I'll like be like, someone's going walking with me today. Um, and and go out and make it sort of a, a, a group activity or social activity. So that way you're um, there's some accountability in there. But we, we really do need to move our bodies, not just for our mental health, but even for our physical health, yes. right? We, we know this, yeah. right? And sometimes we can just walk around our house. I know some people who do stairs, mm -hmm. different when the weather's bad. Yeah, <laughs> There's lots of creative yeah. things we can do. Yeah. Well, you have a DIY mental mm -hmm. health checklist. That's right. Share that with our viewers right yeah. now, if you don't mind. So it's, it really is connected to uh, being aware okay. and acknowledging. Okay. So thinking about how you're doing in terms of your thoughts, in terms of your mood, in terms of your emotion, in terms of your sleep, your appetite, your connectivity, your sense of peace. Mm -hmm. You want to be aware and kind of keeping tabs on how you're doing. If you, uh, and so the um, the scale that I have accessible, whether on my website or even on social media, like I have it in my link in bio, uh, it's, it's free, you know, you can download it. If you check it consistently, if you notice that for um, you're, if you're exceptionally low, anything more than like a couple of weeks, it's really important okay. that you speak to your family doctor okay. so that they can, um, one, be aware and two, do an actual assessment with you to see uh, if there is mental health concerns like depression yeah. or anxiety, right? These are markers that you want to be paying attention to and you want to be tracking. And then the last tip is going to be um, if you've tried mm -hmm. and you've, you know, you've made efforts and you're really struggling and you're really having a hard time, nothing's giving, nothing's improving, yeah. then you need to, to speak to someone, speak to a professional, um, get support, get help. There are people that God has uh, created with uh, the, the heart and the passion and the commitment, the, the drive to support so that you're not alone. So... Well, Colleen, yeah. people like you, and I'm so yeah. thankful for your do-it-yourself mental health checklist that you've created. I'm thankful for all of the work you're doing and, and all of this information you've just shared with us, Thank our you. viewers. Thank you for being with us today, Colleen. Thank you for having me, Laura. You know, if you're struggling with your mental health right now or you're beginning to wonder if you are, don't forget that our prayer partners are there to pray with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not only that, they can point you to mental health resources and you can get the support you need on this journey. Stay with us.